Okay, so yeah, that's an update of a uh, discussion that we started. Uh, well, at least we had the last year at OSPM and uh, some catch up on uh, LTC, and it's about uh, clamping the utilization to achieve some kind of a, a possible or to cover some kind of interest in use cases. So I will have just a few slides to give uh, an introduction of what is uh, the problem that we are trying to solve. And uh, another couple of slides to give a status update on uh, just to recollect a bit what is the overall design idea. Uh, but then most of the talk should be around uh, the last slides where I have four questions and things that are still out for, uh, for discussions. Uh, so just bear with me for the first uh, few slides to give a, a more overview. So what's the problem? The problem is that uh, we, in general, in certain systems, and I'm referring mainly to maybe Android from OS, uh, we have uh, uh, what we can call like informant runtimes. So the applications are not really running themselves directly on the hardware, but they are managed some way from a, from a runtime manager, which can be the Android OS, for example. And uh, this uh, uh, runtime has uh, many informations about the, the role of an application within the system at a certain time. And uh, they are already doing quite a lot of things like uh, partitioning the available resources uh, to different applications depending on their roles. Possibly tuning priorities. Most of the time, it's a static tuning of priorities, but potentially it can also be a runtime tuning of these priorities. And uh, more in general, we can think that we can uh, be interested in uh, defining different optimization goals for an application. It can be more energy efficient for certain tasks, or we want to boost the performances of uh, uh, of other tasks at the same time. And in most of the cases, these are uh, transient configurations, meaning that uh, there is not always one application that is always the highest priority one that has to be boosted. But this application change, for example, in Android, the application which is in front of you, at this, uh, uh, in, in every moment, is the application that needs to be boosted that gives uh, a user feedback on uh, interactive response and so on. So we, want, we don't want necessarily to be energy efficient for that specific application. Why? We want to do certain other optimization for other applications. And these things can change in front time. Uh, there are other uh, things like uh, there are asynchronous events that can happen on a system, like uh, we are touching the screen, so we generate a touch boost event, it means that the user is actually interacting on the application. So in this case, we want to be even more aggressive on maybe boosting, uh, boosting the, the specific tasks of these uh, applications. So in general, in, in the canon, we have quite effective mechanism. The scheduler is quite is quite good. There are mechanisms that can be supported by feeding uh, or providing more context-aware information about what the task is really doing in, uh, in a system. And what we want to try to do is uh, identify a new possible new uh, API to feed this information into the, the scheduler to support these uh, decisions. And maybe we are targeting two things, which is like OPP selection, so better selecting the frequency for the tasks that are running now, or a task placement strategy. It can be different, the task placement strategy, depending on this, the role of a task in, uh, in the system. Uh, so what can be a possible solution? OK, since we want to be less invasive in the kernel, try to use what is already there, we see that utilization is a signal already used for many of these things. So we use it for OPP selection. Uh, usually to select the minimum frequency, which is uh, good enough to, to run uh, the set of runnable tasks on a, on a CPU. And uh, it's not in mainline, but when we have the energy away scheduler, so in product code lines, uh, the energy away scheduler use utilization also to somehow de define where a task should, uh, should, should run. Let's say that a big task, more likely on a big little system to run on a big CPU, it's better to run it there because we have capacity. A little task can be executed on a on a little CPU, so we have capacity awareness, let's say. So uh, we are looking for a per task API. So really the idea is that we would like to be able to tag every task with some semantics on top of what is the task doing in this moment with the system. So it has to be a context aware. This is a context aware means that depending on the state of the task, we can change this set of attributes for, for a task. And uh, we want to implement in kernel space a certain uh, mechanism that are possibly overhead for both bias of the uh, selection and the task algorithm. So one possible way out of this uh, problem is to apply a sort of clamping mechanism on top of the utilization signal, and we did that after what I mean for that, and then aggregate the clamp and the utilization of every task to, for example, support the, uh, the selection or better selection of the OPP. For CPU. So what we what we discussed so far is uh, I mean the discussion is going on for probably a couple of years. 
the first implementation, uh, it was an RFC that we posted on LKML a couple of years ago, and what is, is what we call Shetune, and these are the solutions currently used in, uh, in Android systems. Uh, the main thing is that it's based on, on, on the concept of a margin, uh, which is computed proportionally to a boost value that we assign to every task. And this margin is either added or removed from the utilization uh, signal. So this, uh, uh, this proposal is not going to fly on mainline for many different reasons. Uh, one of the reasons is that uh, it's based on a dedicated C-group controller, uh, which has limits on the number of C-groups you can create, which is not really fitting with the C-group idea. But uh, the other point was uh, also that this concept of margin is not really intuitive. Uh, so it's, it seems to be a little bit tricky to really understand what it's doing in, uh, in the system. And so there was a proposal uh, I think from, yeah, uh, it was from, from Paul Turner uh, when we discussed it the first uh, time at the PC. Uh, we should try to use instead uh, a clamping mechanism where we set exactly what is the minimum frequency required for a task, for example, or the maximum frequency required for a task. That was the rough idea. And we developed uh, this uh, these idea. So there was another posting last year based on a, uh, okay, uh, another good point is that the CPU controller is already there in C groups and is already in charge of uh, allocating bandwidth different tasks. So why not trying to extend this controller with some more semantics on top to, to have a single point where we actually define the constraints for a, for a CPU in terms of planning. So there was another proposal based on uh, clamping the capacity as a concept, which uh, Peter Duncan, because it actually makes sense. We are not really clamping the capacity of a CPU. The capacity, strictly speaking, is more like a static property of a CPU. is whatever you can do, everything you can put on a CPU. Uh, but what we are really, really doing is modifying the utilization of a signal. So in the proposal, we switch to the idea to clamping the utilization. That's why the name is using clamp now. And also the implementation was based on RB3 to keep track of which task was active on a system, which uh, constraints should be enforced right now on a CPU. And it has a certain amount of overheads. So it has been replaced by a ref counting uh, approach, which is much more uh, likely. So the last posting, that we posted on uh, on the list a few few weeks ago uh, is based on this uh, um, main idea. So utilization planting, uh, extension of the CPU uh, controller, and RF counting based mechanism to know what are the constraints active at, uh, at the time. Uh, so what are the main features of this new proposal? Okay, so one big uh, request from Tejun was okay, we cannot have only C groups as an interface because uh, if we are adding a new API. There should be a primary interface which is available so if C groups are not available. And this was kind of matching with our idea that we want a per task API. So we proposed an extension of the shared set adder where it's actually possible if you don't have C groups to pass this information for every single task in, uh, in the systems. C groups is still there, is, a, is an optional API you can enable. And in case you have C groups, the semantics is uh, still uh, the same that we use, for example, for CPU sets and task affinity. So C groups define the bigger constraints that the task attribute has to, uh, to respect. So we have an unlimited number of C groups. That's true. So we get, that was the limitation of the first proposal. You can create as many C groups as you want. What is limited instead is the number of different clamp values that you can have. And uh, I will tell something more that actually. So why we have a limited number of clamping value? Because in real uh, in real usages, we don't really see the needs to clamp for an infinite number of uh, of possible uh, uh, value, just because there are no applications. And in general, since we are clamping utilization, this is a finite signal. So you can always find a sensible way to discretize this signal and make it uh, uh, a finite number of possible different values. Uh, and so we come out with an idea to allow a little bit of flexibility. So from user space, you can potentially use whatever value you want, but then these values are mapped into affinity numbers of value in, uh, in kernel space. And finally, uh, the support, differently from the first shape tune, is now uh, for both fair and RT tasks. So it applies to both these uh, classes and gives some kind of benefits in terms of value control. For, for your limited number uh, something value, or you're matching that with the routine? Yeah, yeah, that's program. so not in this proposal. So in this proposal is a k-config option, uh, which is probably good enough. But uh, one idea was, okay, if we know what are the OPTs, we can come to the OPT values. That's another possible option. Yeah. Or otherwise, usually, if you really need to boost a task or clamp a task, you know, so think that likely you will need to boost in 10% steps. It doesn't really make sense for probably to boost 11% or 9%. So there can be another finite discretization that can be done. So, but this is one of the points for the discussion. 
And so just an overview how this works. Basically, the idea is that uh, within the task structure, we have uh, these new sets of attributes that defines the minimum value uh, uh, or uh, and the maximum value we uh, we want to consider for the utilization of a specific task. This is the per task specific uh, definition of the U clamp uh, value that comes via the C scold uh, shape set after. If you have C group, you have a similar data structure here where you define the min and max value for all the tasks within a certain uh, group. And uh, if you have C groups, basically a task is mapped to, to a group. So a task can see both its own value and the value enforced by the C group in which, uh, in which it is. So Are the per task values restricted by the C group? For example, what we use CPU set, does a uh, per task get set affinity must be a subset of the yeah. C group setting. Yeah. Is that here as well? Yeah, it's working that way, not in the sense that we enforce this value. So this value here can be whatever. When we use the value, we do this a step. Basically. So we have a pair uh, value, uh, a pair task value, we have a pair C group value. When we enqueue the task, we have basically to define what is the value that we use right now for that task. <laughs> so we do an aggregation at this uh, stage and we figure out what is uh, the clump of value that we have to set now for for that task. So and this is restricted. Yeah, so if you directly make it a second the task for values, um, I think you can get away with the plus one. Do away with the plus one. So yeah, the, so the plus one is the dimension of this uh, array, basically. So what yeah. is this array? So this array is used or this one, this is the per CPU, so it's in the past part. So for every for every possible different clump value, we have an entry here. So let's say that you have only one C group uh, and that is setting a minimum clump value of 10%. So you will have an entry here. This is the value for the for the for that task group. Then there are tasks that are not in that task groups. And so by definition, all the tasks that are not in a task group, they are in the root uh, task group. Or they are they don't have a specifically assigned uh, task value. So these tasks are tracked by the first entry. That's the reason of being zero. It means that all the algorithms that we use, it will work independent from knowing whether the task is in a task group or not. But if you, if you do it the other way around and have land values always set, if there is a root, that you don't need the, the zero. Uh, so you mean by changing this value? If, if you set a root value, change the setting of every single task. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's that's possible. It's yeah, it's actually one of the things that we have to see. Uh, I think that right now one of the issues that I kind of found is that since we have these two values and the way I use it now, when we do the task we pick either one value or the other if both of these uh, frameworks are in place on so the per task and this group. So you can have the case where a task is in a C group which is, uh, let's say, boosting the task to 50%. But the runtimes know that one specific task in that group doesn't really need 50%. We can uh, run it lower. Maybe we can also count it. So we can define a different value for a task within a, within a group. So we still want to see these two domains. But uh, at the end, we have to aggregate and pick the most restrictive one of, uh, of the two. And so in this case, that's why. Yeah, you, if you can do that with just the tasks. You can have a copy of the thing. I mean, the. The one set by the set out and the other that is actually the actual one. Um, right. So with, with, with task affinity, we, we lose the information yeah. when you put it into the secret. You can do the same here. Um, make sure that the task copy is as least as restrictive as the, as the secret version, be it the root secret or, or any other secret. So you can always pick task. Uh, you, you don't need the yeah. So losing the properties probably is something that is not yeah. working on certain use cases. Let's say that, for example, a task is living in a C group. We have here the value of the C group because it's the most restricted. But then we move this task in another C group, which has a more uh, wide range of clamping. Then in that case, we want to use the task clamping. That's it. Okay. So that is something that needs to be spelled out. Yeah. We yeah. want that particular. Then in that case, you can have, uh, let's say, the you don't forget a thing by having a copy of the user set using uh, set out attributes, and then you. Have That's why we have this copy, and then we aggregate. When we aggregate, we back annotating the task. What is the value that we are using now? This is the current value. And if the task moves, 
we, we actually use this way, the backend of data value to fix the accounting on the queue when we release the task. And then we do a new aggregation, the new destinations. Yeah, new so I'm not convinced of the back aggregation thing. Yeah, yeah, um, no, the data is uh, in there. But you have an explicit difference from, from the existing affinity. Um, so I think that needs to be stated. Um, and the reasons why. Yeah. So in the, in the CPU set, I look at it and really, yeah, it's working like that. We we lost the information. <coughs> I was just wondering that maybe in the use cases that we have on end, but we have to describe them better. Uh, it's still valuable to keep the information there. And our use case, well, let's say a task is uh, is it's like uh, it's like boosted uh, fifty percent, right? And it's living in a C group where we clamp the utilization to ten because we want to slow, slow down all these tasks. So the task cannot be boosted at this period, and we enqueue it in the 10 clamping value. We don't boost the CPU. Then this task becomes like the top up in the case of Android. So we move it in a CPU so where we remove these constraints it's much more valid. Then in this case, we want to boost the task 10. So we do want to keep all the information and aggregate them at enqueue time. This is the only time where we can really pick the decision. That's one reason. The other reason was, uh, well, in general, we can, for the bugging part or whatever, know what is the value required for one specific task from user space. This is under most control of the, it's both under control of user space, but this is maybe runtime enforced constraints, and this is something that uh, the runtime is specifically giving for one task, so maybe that can be still but, where you're but keeping this. Patrick, control. you just said uh, you move it into a foreground or top up. Isn't foreground or top up also like related to a task group then, which can yes. have the other data? Yes. And in this case, it will just take the. <laughs> The clamp values from the two. No, button. it will still take the, the most restrictive of the two. So if this one is boosted only 10, let's say, in the new destination group is boosted only 10, but the task has a boost value explicit, which is 50, then it can go 50 when it is giving this new group. Just as a semantic thing, it's not a heavy super interface. It, it can be a working semantic, just in this less, less so flexible. Right? Okay. And what's the if the, the max value of the group is lower than the mean value of the task? Okay. This, this, this is aggregated at this stage. Okay. Uh, to be honest, I, I'm not entirely sure I'm doing now the aggregation groups in the, the max value with respect to the mean value. This is probably something yeah. broken now. But it's aggregated uh, at least within the column. So the mean value has to be lower than the mean value of the group and the max value. But we should do that aggregation also. So it has to be a restriction, whatever. I'm not sure to catch uh, what is the interest to have this task um, clumping value to take into account in the C group. My, group. my understanding was that the C group should say, OK, for this group of tasks, this is the mean and the max. Um, so why let's, say, uh, let's, uh, let's make an, an example. Uh, let's say that you have uh, in Android when you move a task into the top up, we boost it ten percent all the tasks, yeah. right? yeah. unless there is a touch boost event which bumps up to fifteen percent during the touch boost event. But let's say for whatever reason, one task of this uh, application is really important. We always want to boost it independently from uh, the touch boost phase. This is a boost phase, right? In this case, in fact, this task has been put in to the 50. It is leaving the top up group, but you will get this 50% boost in the CPU. When you move the task into a group, which is the background group where we have everything, then we don't want, we want to mask this 50%. It will become the 10% max utilization for the task on that group. And that's why we, we want to keep the information, but value the information only when the CPU allows to, to get this, this range of. Maybe if your task has a task that you do that. Right. What's an example of a task that you would actually do that with the override? So I think that we have many use cases of where we want to not boost the tasks. This was something in the past where uh, we are living in a, in a, in a top-up uh, group where the boost value is 10 for everything, but there are certain maybe background tasks that we never want to boost them because they are really background tasks. So we want to clamp them to be zero. And if only one of these tasks is running on the CPU, we don't want to bump the, the frequency 10% just because it's a top-up task. It's a top-up task, but it has a, a task-specific constraint, which is I can always run it and move. In this case, would it be easier? Yeah. yeah. Why are they are in the top-up? Yeah. Yeah. Because, well, that's one of the models. That this depends on how 
Android actually classify tasks, and this is also something that we are probably going to extend or change. But in general, the, the idea is that right now we map uh, uh, all the tasks of an application within, let's say, a group to make it simple. So an application has all, only one process. So all the tasks uh, uh, of that application are moved all together into the top-up when the that. application is uh, when the application is the top up. And then we, we lose any kind of possibility to be more precise on defining which tasks are. Uh, yeah. But how do you know? How do you... This is defined by the runtime. So if we. Yeah, but in this case, There are a few special ones, and uh, I mean, it's part of the discussion with Louis. So the, the idea is that potentially uh, it's, it's difficult to expose API to user space, right? But potentially, if you expose API, there are nice level API. Well, you allow an application to say, okay, these tasks are not really important for me, are background activity, whatever. You can expose such an API to user space, and the application knows that, for example, there is some uh, performance monitoring application that they don't really care to run at maximum speed or whatever. So you can take this application as not important and, oh, sorry. So you're saying the application can volunteer? Potentially, the application can voluntarily degree some tasks to background activities and please, uh, and that's one of the use cases that can be captured with the C groups. And no one will call that. <laughs> yeah, so, no one, so, so whenever there's an interface of take this to red stuff, <laughs> well, it depends on the use case. If you, if you save quite a lot of energy and uh, your user so looks at the battery draining, maybe they can be. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. And some of them like the Do you see a usage in the room? Yeah, there are like the, you know, the garbage collection, well, that's probably not, but there are some garbage collection things that can run at the lower OPP, you don't really care about them, so potentially can use can secret, then, Yeah, so would you think you would use the new? Or if it's any more efficient, not. So the, the, the real meaning of the pair task is just because did you ask it for? We can have your pair basket. Yeah, and it makes okay. sense. Okay, so, I mean, you need, you need something. Line. You need something that can be usable. Also, if C groups are not there, it makes sense. Also, but but well, who's the customer? So I guess we don't simpler if you get rid of the task run. Right. Yeah. The point is maybe I think that's available pair basket. Yeah. It's more about should we override or not. Well, one, so one thing might be that, uh, so distribution, usually they don't use C groups at all. So you having the interface, per task uh, interface, you can use this thing to actually make things work on distribution instead of Android or Chrome OS. And then, but so. then you can say the task group, the task group setting always overrides. Always overrides. Over right. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a matter of semantics, whatever we yeah. want to do. So we can say, okay, we use this value, we don't care about this one. We don't have this aggregation. Basically, that's just a filter. We keep this one. It is in a group. Fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's the way we can define the semantics of, of it. But I really think that we should keep this one here because otherwise, I mean, it's difficult to get it in. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, if if we need it, uh, if we need well, it. Well, 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 uh, or, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, well, here there is one usage which is for frequency driving, for example, right. and you see that uh, this is the normal pair signal, but uh, the the max clamp and the min clamps they are applied whenever the task is running. So, when it's at zero thousand twenty four, the task is not running. Uh, this is a periodic task to add the up. When it's running, we enforce the clamp value and the pad signal is clamped to this value. We use this value to select the OBP. So basically, we select something which is in this uh, value. Yeah, well, that's, 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 that's the OBP. Uh, the same things apply when the RDS, if you have this clamped value and task is really small, you can run the task on a higher OPP, or vice versa, you can have a, uh, a big task that you want to run on a lower OPP just because you want that, and then in that case, we will never pick an OPP which is aggregated. Uh, the clamping for max value, for example, to me can fix it. In, in Android right now, we have out of three pages for a real time task because we go to max for real time task. But on certain specific platform, we know that we don't really care for these uh, real time tasks to go to the max OPP. Midway OPPs will not. 
And with these mechanisms, we can, uh, when these are the tasks are running, we can still clamp up the, the value. Basically, we don't go to max, but we clamp up no, the max. Okay. My question was, okay, so do I point to the Yes. Okay. So, uh, my question was, for the very robust particular <coughs> thing, which is how, how that is going to affect as task placement. Yes. So it's not mainline sorry now, and we are uh, not working on that. But the, what we do in the AS is uh, we use the clamp value when we decide where to place a task. So if the task is a small task but it's boosted to the top up task, then it appears to the schedule like to be a big task, and we then bias the selection of a big CPU instead of a little one. So we move the task on a big side, even if it's a small one. While a big task, uh, which is clamped a lot, can still be scheduled on the little CPU. We will saturate the little CPU fine. We run at the lower OPT, we will be fine. But we can run it on the lower CPU even if it's a big one. Uh, this is not proposed in the, in the current in the current posting. We're proposing only on OPT driving. Just oh, yeah, yeah, I know that. But then I think you should also mention the, the AS effect strategy where you roll anyway. So yeah, I can mention that in the past we had the impression that if we mention future future extension without providing the code, it seems like okay, we'll see the real picture and provide the well, code. So we don't want to provide a big it's batch. Good so you mention it. Okay. It's good to, because I think that somebody was complaining already that this is about alien and yes, the, right. uh, you are driving this yeah. utilization which is not exactly straightforward. Yeah, you can, you know, if you look at that this way, it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but so it would be good to mention that the goal is actually to also use it for other things. Yeah, for, you could also not mention yes, but just mention that there might be a performance only thing. I mean, not considering the energy sure. performance yeah. trade off, but That's you can use whatever we have already mainline yeah. to actually influence uh, scheduling for performance only. Yeah. Right, but so, so mention that the bigger yeah. picture. Yeah. Yeah. So outside of the DS domain, it's really something that you can use on asymmetric systems, also, such as Big Little. I don't really see it using on SMP system. So it's somehow related to capacity awareness, maybe you can yeah. find the usage as a first step yeah. for something. Yeah. Probably use that. I mean, when you want to look at some available Yeah. 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 We already had a little bit of discussion, but there was a few points I would like to call out explicitly. So, but yeah, okay. So the, the first question was that we already kind of discussed last year. Is, is the use cases compelling enough to have such a feature in the in the, and the most interesting use case that we identified so far is like a boosting strategy where we can uh, we can. Uh, we can select eigen frequency for small tasks or place them on eigen capacity CPU to follow this use case. And the other one is clamping, so reducing the OPP to be more energy efficient, not necessarily uh, not, not necessarily using less energy because that's a matter of a race to idle versus uh, other strategy, but for sure you are more power efficient. So if you don't really want to heat up your system or whatever, you can clamp the maximum utilization and run longer, maybe consume more energy, but uh, you don't have thermal stress on, on the device, this kind of thing. And that's a uh, special case is a uh, real time task uh, clamping uh, in a user configured uh, way. Uh, so, are these use cases like comparing an active to work on defining more or describing better use cases? There is a description in the link here. Uh, there is a better description on the HTML about these two use cases. If people can review them and see if they make sense or if you should add other uh, better details, it would be interesting and useful. So I would mention that uh, we did the, um, the task placement case, which is, which makes the if you just if you, if you, if you want to make uh, make the point of using station, you know, something and not say something like something. So that makes this argument. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, you are then so if you have a an example even well real life for fast placement. Yeah, for yeah. fast placement. Okay. Then I was just mentioning that this is a two third direction. Yeah. And then without going yeah. into details of that, but they are good for that. Okay, cool. So Another uh, discussion point is the limited number of uh, clamp groups. So as it, why there is this limited number? Because if, basically if you go back to this table, at a certain point we have to aggregate the different clamp values in every CPU. So there are different tasks runnable on a CPU. We have to figure out what is the maximum of the minimum clamping or what is the maximum of the, of the maximum clamping and use that right now for the CPU. This maximum depends on the tasks that are runnable on a CPU in a certain point. Uh, many times when you enqueue a task, you don't really need, uh, you already know what is the maximum. If you enqueue a task which is less boosted than another one, the maximum is not really changing. So that's fine. Other times you need to go through this list and figure out a new a new maximum. That's one of the other reasons why this is uh, limited. So there is one uh, functional reason. We don't really care about the number of boost values. It's quite likely a limited number. And the other one is uh, sometimes we have to find out a maximum, which is kind of a linear. Uh, operation on, on that uh, on that table. Um, so a big point for me is uh, okay. Is, yeah. Just, um, I think you, you mentioned earlier that you had uh, an arbitrary based implementation kind of thing. Yeah. This one shouldn't have this implementation, right? No, it was replacing it was replacing that list, but it's uh, adding a load there. It allows you to find out immediately what is the maximum mean, but the yeah. overheads with that bench. It's just yeah, adjusted so measure and there is really way more. What, what's with, the other? What does it come from? It's like it would come from what? Yeah. The overhead, like is it what is? Yeah, it's kind of it's adding those in the hard between, rebalancing it, figure out the minimum. That's that's overhead. It's not cache friendly. This data structure can basically fit into a single cache line up to sixteen mm -hmm. different right. values. You have one cache line, figure out the max is so fast, and uh, red counting. I mean, according <coughs> to Edbench, it doesn't really give any kind of overheads. So. Yeah, that's, that's how it, I started with that because it makes more sense for me, but then uh, Peter was a little bit upset, and actually by measuring it better, it was uh, giving us some overheads with Eggbench, which is probably not the case where we use most of these things. You can compile all this stuff from the kernel, so you can have a kernel without anything, but still. Yeah, but then there's the dispos that for them it's, it's not a choice. They need to enable everything. Yeah. Um, so. From the integration standpoint, I think that the list is fine, provided that we accept that having a limited number of different clamp value is not really a limitation because of the functional usage of these things and because of the benefits that we have in terms of them. Maybe we can find something more smarter than going to another end, so it's open for, for continuous let's say. Uh, so is the uh, Capacity of clamping, right? So, is it like on a static value or like in terms of? No, so basically, we have this mapping because the application, the user space can ask whatever value they want, and then we translate the value. Let's say the application asks 10, 20, so we fill up this lot with the values, the different values that an application asks for the mean clamping or for the max clamping. There are two different sets. And then, uh, whenever you pick a slot, you get the index that we use in the fast part to do the reference counting on that side. Uh, if uh, this is like 10 different values and uh, you have a user space that asks for uh, 11 different values than this one, then you get a uh, no space uh, or whatever. And you... And I'm just thinking, like, ultimately, this affects uh, this includes as a frequency selection, right? Yes. So, for example, like for example, in Android case, for example, when background task is only running, so I just wanted to limit my system to another, for example, nominal level, not to a higher level. So, some kind of like, I mean, if we can actually get these values from DT or something. Basically, you, for example, you want, for example, for the same voltage, there will be different frequencies. So, so we could take yeah. maximum frequency of that particular voltage level. So, if we can yeah. actually yeah. determine those values, I mean, so we have everything. right now they are populated from user space. So, there is a, one of the discussion points in Chakra to extend this with some other uh, pri different priority values that can come from the people, potential of phone drivers. So everything we put in here, so right now we give a simple implementation to understand the concept, but the, I mean, we can extend it to a broader other use if there are use cases that makes them usable. Yeah, I don't think that this will solve that. Probably that you're talking about pruning uh, OPCs that 
So these are these are zero slot at the at the bottom. The plus one slot. This is apply system wide, and uh, potentially if you have a kernel space API where a DP pass or whatever can read this value, you can stick a value here which is below thousand twenty four, and you will never pick this uh, highest OPP for that platform. It's a sort of uh, it's not really true in OPPs, but if your OPPs are uh, scaled to be thousand twenty four, the maximum one, then automatically to put eight hundred, you will cut away certain OPPs. Can be done so. And be done. So, they are. Well, you can change it whenever you want. Right now, it's uh, it's never configured. Uh, mm. or actually, it is configured via C groups, but they don't require to remove the configuration on the root group because uh, it's not used in every everywhere else. So we remove it. But we have one possibility is to have like a kernel interface or something that can, uh, for example, tune this value yeah. or expose it. Actually, Tejun was proposing to expose it a proper test or the test. The value for the for the system wide configuration. So it's one of the discussion points for uh, for these things. Uh, okay, so reference count is maybe the implementation reference count instead of the RPG or whatever. So far, for us, it seems to be the most uh, effective way. But if there are other proposals, I mean, we can try to evaluate them. It seems to be quite effective right now. But five minutes. Five minutes. So. Uh, there are only two slides. <laughs> yeah, okay, so that's the most of that. So, shape set up. Can we extend this score or is a dog whatever? And the way we extended it right now is that we uh, we propose it to have a couple of uh, attributes which are miniaturization and max utilization. So, the main complaint is that it's too implementation <coughs> specific because it's utilization, the naming, and because of the scale, which is 1024. So the scale probably can be fixed by restricting it to something more generic, like a percentage, 0, 100 percent. That's really generic enough. The name utilization still is the name utilization. So yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. I mean, it is something that exists in scheduling. Well, it's fairly well defined, and we use it for for that. Um, Yeah, except for people that can't do math. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, well, it was not a complaint uh, from uh, um, so the complaint from Beijing was that uh, we are using util mean and we are in the current implementation we are like, capping frequency. So it was proposing to set frequent mean and frequent max. That was the main Then I added that I want utilization because there are these other use cases like task space or whatever. So we really want something more generic, which is not frequency platform dependent. Uh, about using utilization on some other term. Also, the utilization is a task property mm -hmm. as we have it. Our frequency is not, but that's yeah. CPU. Yeah. Um, okay, that's very proper. So, yeah. So, you are fine with utilization in this scale or 1024? Well, I, I always myself prefer power of two. Okay. However, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a weird human. <laughs> I don't know. It is, I think that the main argument here is a user space interface. This has to be potentially generic. If this 1024 is too much Linux kernel specific, it would be a Linux feature anyway. But if it's too much Linux kernel specific, and someone is encoding application, maybe yeah. that they can run on other operating systems that has a similar feature, maybe 1024 is too much. Uh, then you specific. have a layer to translate. How do you expect it to be? I mean, user space can always scale if they have to. Why do? Because it's a lot. If they're going to use an application on this side, they're still going to be right. Yeah. So whatever. Okay. So thousand fifty-four. Fine. Yeah. So 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 TJ runs around with secret printing and can change everything from zero to a hundred. What about this other proposal to not use explicit attributes like mean and max utilization, but uh, we use, uh, we already have shape and time and shape period if, uh, for deadline. They are used right now only for deadline. But if, that, that, that only gives you one of the two values, right? Uh, what do you mean one of the two values? 
Well, you need two utilization measures. You should need a min and a max. Yeah, no, this this is full is in any way is uh yeah. You have to do yeah, you have to call it two yeah. times. Yes. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> okay. The interesting problem of this one is that you can also fold in uh, the the beta plugs. Yeah, no, you don't want that either. That's, that's too much specific. This is in Canon space, I mean, it's not, uh, not really, but in Canon space, if, if someone tells you runtime 10 and period 100, or let's say 100 and 1,000. So 100 milliseconds is over 1,000 is 10 percent utilization, but 100 milliseconds with a 32 millisecond alpha is a big task. So we can potentially translate into a, a utilization is 80 percent. Uh, so we can put a bit of that, what is the real utilization? Right. Because with the way it would fit in to the, to the value we want to set, I mean, that to do. But that, that, um, then the user of the interface needs to know this. Yeah, this right. More, That's more yeah. complicated. Yeah. 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 Okay. Fine. So what we have is already okay. okay. Patrick, Fine. another thing, when you when you know don't want to mix uh, the per task and per task group thing, when you want to keep them separate. What do you do in a setup where you have group support and people are calling this interface per task? Yeah, that's what well, I that we do yeah, the so aggregation. Yeah, we, we need some semantic and yeah. the existing semantic force. Yeah. If you is, is that the C group um, clamps or, or overrides the task mm -hmm. in such that it loses it. So the, 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 the funny thing that can happen in this case is that we remove some CPUs and then uh, at a certain point we have these, uh, the remaining CPUs offline, we basically run the task everywhere. So we don't keep the information, okay, there was some certain CPUs in the task. I'm, yeah, I'm not saying it's a good semantic, I'm saying it's an existing inconsistency. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I mean, this is bad. I mean, you know, that's the huh? so, okay. So my, my laptop has a few seconds timeout when it's still blank. If you quickly press the key, it does not ask over the password. <laughs> yeah, in my opinion, the point are there in never lots, which is quite nice. Um, so, okay, we are okay with this one. The shit is in the equation that is acceptable. Uh, okay, yeah. That, so uh, there is a proposal in the current patch set that the top, the two topmost patches they integrate uh, util compute with pay task first and with real time task uh, after. And the way it's done is that we clamp uh, the class utilization independently. So we clamp the real time tasks, we clamp uh, the pay task utilization, and then we sum them together. We the intend that uh, we want to be fair. Like if they, if we have a uh, twenty percent uh, real time utilization and there is a uh, hundred. Utilization for tasks, we still want to give uh, to some of the things. So maybe it doesn't make sense. We want to clamp the overall to be whatever it is the the, the clamp value defined. At least as possible to be discussed or and the pages are there to, to discuss this response. Right now, it's clamping the single classes and then adding them together, which also adds up what we do with the deadline because we have deadline and then we add up the real time clamp and then we have uh, so the that. <clears throat> sort of looked at in the broader, uh, in broader context because it said um, because it's that is what you are planning to do is the task yeah. placement thing. Yeah, so, so if you choose one here, then it, it, you will probably yeah. to do the same thing there because otherwise you will yeah. be inconsistent. So I think there will be discussion tomorrow with the energy model because there was already ideas to maybe refactor or yeah, try to factorize some of the these policies somewhere where we can. Yeah, the only, you know, the only, the only, like, my, my only comment is like it consistent. Yeah. Make sure that it will be consistent. Yeah, that's not the way I see. So, so what we'll, we'll, we'll go now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah it's already quite confusing to, to be honest. But in the current orientation, I think that's the less invasive way we can add these things. Uh, if we want to be more like looking into the future, we should probably consider whatever the energy model needs and try to put together these use cases and come up with from the beginning with something like uh, which is fairly together. The question is, uh, can we imagine the part where we have uh, these as an initial implementation and not necessarily waiting for, I hope that the energy model will enter in the next few weeks, uh, but uh, if it takes uh, a longer time, so there wanna... is a risk that if you put that and then try to change it. Here's one process. Somebody will see a person yeah. 
and then what are you going to do? Uh, yeah. Okay. So we have to factor in. Okay. Cool. Other so, Patrick, uh, some question about the summing. So if you Something blindly, wouldn't you? When we do aggregate util in shade util, we start from deadline. Then we get, uh, right now we get max for, if there are real time tasks running, we get just max and return. And with this one, we clamp the real time class depending on the clamp value. And then we add uh, the clamped value of CFS in uh, aggregate util in shade util. Then you, you rest like uh, both, or you have to clamp it, I guess. I mean, say the min clamp of RDM, CFS, or both like. Yeah. And then if you send them together, we'll Yeah. I think that that's uh, already handled by the by the caller of uh, aggregate, or uh, just before bailing out from aggregate, we clamp it. But yeah, we have to look at it. I think it's already a mouthful. Well, I guess it's if you call CPU rig driver, we will grant we will bring it to the tire and give it all But if you have the higher the capacity of the CPU, you will end up with frequency, which is the bow, like actual frequency for that CPU. And then I guess right after you just return the maximum. Yeah. Maybe you just want to do this. Yeah, but yeah, we have to look at it. Uh, yeah, I guess it's the last two. It's the last two pages, just to review what we see. Uh, so, final slide. Okay, so these are more like a possible extension points that we can consider for the future, and the idea was just to collect some kind of initial feedbacks, whether they make sense or not. So the first one is, uh, right now we have user space APIs, uh, C groups or C scope based. Uh, one possibility is, okay, in this table of clamp groups, maybe we can reserve certain slots that are only for camera space APIs, with the idea that potentially these uh, uh, camera reserve slots are higher priority than the clamping required by user space. And this can be used to fold the information, for example, coming from film or whatever. So there is some clamping going on because the film required for clamping value. We want to aggregate uh, all this, the clamping rate information in one single place so that the schedule doesn't need to be changed in other parts. It will be part, will be part of the same clamping strategy. Uh, so that's basically one use case. Another use case can be like right now in uh, in Android to accept a touch boost, we go up to user space and then we write from user space something. So the driver, the touch screen driver already knows that is a touch boost boost event going on. It can write directly on a reserve slot. Now we have touch boost and we boost everything without ground in in, uh, in user space or just sending a notification to user space but going straight from cabin space. So these are more or less the use cases. I think it can be implemented by extending just this array with some slots that are reserved for, for kernel space in some, in some way. And you talked about this? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah, it's, it's for the future to be discussed. <laughs> okay. uh, and that's in, another interesting thing, I think, because we have other use cases in Android where we, we go up to user space, we set a value, and then we, we arm a timer and we go uh, after a timeout and we reset the value, like a booster value. So uh, a semantics where when we enqueue a task, we add the reference counting, but then we arm a timer or some kind of a mechanism in the space that release uh, this reference counting from kernel space without necessarily making up something. This will allow, for example, to keep a, a boost value for a certain amount of time, maybe configure or somehow, and do everything in kernel space. Uh, that's another idea uh, we discuss in the future. And the other one, uh, okay, that's even more controversial in general. So right now, it's time out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, basically, right now we, we optimize for two Schedule, maybe it can be useful to have something that allows to say, okay, for certain tasks we want to be more energy efficient and use the energy deep and whatever, uh, instead of going for the standard path that we have indicated. So maybe try to add uh, some additional attributes apart from using mean and using max, some other attributes that allow to say, okay, this task has to be energy uh, optimized aggressively, or we don't care about the energy, just go for for the for the performances. Uh, but yeah, again, we have uh, something similar in Android that is not going to fly ever in mainnet as it is right now. We don't even know if you really need it because possibly we can solve the same issues in other classes or many use cases like that and whatever. 
but maybe there are still some use cases that can benefit from such an API. So possibly in the future we'll discuss about or we can propose something about that. Okay. Yeah, that's that's all about dumping and that's all. Yeah, the plan <laughs> Um, I was just saying the FLAMP API would probably also help there because you, if you win FLAMP, then you have the chance of going about the tipping point, right? Then I guess that would also help. Why? Oh, the tipping point this really depends on the utilization of the signals. Tipping point right now in the latest, the latest energy uh, web matches decides whether you. You can go about it's nice, right? Using this and disable the AES by setting some value actually. So the utilization in place. Yeah. The utilization is not inflated. I mean, uh, you can move a task on a big CPU. It's a 10% task, you will still get 10% utilization on the CPU level. It's just that it's running on highest OPP with respect to the OPP that we satisfy the 10%. But the bad signal is not touched at all, and that's the bad signal that defines the overutilized. So I don't see what we can, if we can discuss better. Overfood. Oh, over food, yeah. <laughs> okay, All right, thank you. So, thank you.